In the previous lecture, we completed introduction to depletion type MOSFET biasing and now in this lecture, we will discuss self bias configuration of depletion type MOSFET or more precisely, I can say self bias configuration of N channel depletion type MOSFET. On your screen, you can see the network and in this network, we are having N channel depletion type MOSFET and this N channel depletion type MOSFET is biased using the self bias configuration. And we will start directly with one problem. And in this problem, there are two parts. In the A part, we have to find out current IDQ and voltage VGSQ. And they are the coordinates of operating point. So simply, we have to find out the operating point in the A part. In the B part, we have to find out voltage VDS and potential at point D. VDS is the output voltage, output voltage and VD is the potential at drain. So this is what we have to do in this problem. And uh, let's first see what are the parameters given in the problem. You can see resistance RD is given. It is equal to 1.2 kilo ohm and resistance rs is also given it is equal to 0.43 kilo ohm and resistance rg is equal to 1 mega ohm idss the saturated drain current is equal to 6 milliamp and the pinch of voltage is equal to minus 4 volt and using this we have to find out idq and vgsq so what is idq idq is simply the drain current id or the output current and voltage VGSQ is the input voltage VGS. So first we will try to find out ID and VGS and to do this we need two curves. The first one is the transfer characteristics of N channel D MOSFET and the second one is the load line of the network. If you remember the self bias configuration of JFET, we followed two approaches. The first one was mathematical approach and the second one was the graphical approach and in this problem we will follow the graphical approach and because of this reason only we are trying to plot the transfer curve of the device and the load line of the network you can see we have the graph and using this graph we will obtain the operating point and first I will plot the transfer curve and to plot the transfer curve we need four points and while plotting the transfer curve of JFET, we required only three points. But in this case, we need four points. The extra point is there because voltage VGS can be positive. Because of this reason, we need one extra point. Now let's obtain the first point, the first point. And to obtain the first point, we have to make the drain current ID equal to zero amp. And when you put ID equal to 0 amp in the Shockley's equation, which is ID equal to IDSS inside the bracket 1 minus VGS over VP whole square, put ID equal to 0 amp here and you will get VGS is equal to VP and VP here is equal to minus 4 volt. So VGS is equal to minus 4 volt. So the two coordinates of first point are minus 4 volt and 0 amp. Let's find out the second point. To find out the second point, we will make voltage VGS equal to 0 volt. And when you make VGS equal to 0 volt, you will find ID is equal to IDSS. IDSS is equal to 6 milliamp. So ID is equal to 6 milliamp. And we have the two coordinates of the second point. Let's find the third point, the third point. And to obtain the third point, I will make VGS equal to VP over two. VP over two means minus four volt over two. So it will be minus two volt. And when you put VGS equal to VP over two, here you will find ID is equal to IDSS over four. IDSS is equal to 6 milliamp. So ID is equal to 6 milliamp over 4, which is equal to 1.5 milliamp. 
So this is what we have as the two coordinates of the third point. Let's move to the fourth point. Now there is one very important thing I want to explain regarding the fourth point. Before actually obtaining the fourth point, we will first obtain the equation of load line and after that I will explain whether it is required to obtain the fourth point or not and to obtain the load line, I will apply Kirchhoff's voltage law in the input loop. So let's apply Kirchhoff's voltage law in the input loop. I will start from 0 volt that is the ground and I will end at 0 volt that is also the ground or you can simply connect these two points. So let's apply Kirchhoff's voltage law. The current in this branch or through resistance RG is the gate current IG and we already know gate current is nearly equal to 0 amp. So we have 0 volt that is the drop across resistance RG then we have minus VGS minus VGS and after this we will subtract the drop across resistance RS which is equal to current IS multiplied with RS. IS is equal to ID so we will have the drop equal to IDRS so minus IDRS IDRS equal to 0 volt so VGS is simply equal to minus IDRS and you can see this is the equation of a straight line VGS is X ID is Y and in this equation the intercept C is equal to 0 because when you write this equation in the form y equal to mx plus c you will find intercept c is equal to 0 and when intercept is equal to 0 this means the straight line will pass through the origin. So there is no need to plot the fourth point because the straight line will pass through the origin and when it passes through the origin with negative slope you can see the slope is negative because we have ID equal to minus 1 over RS this is the slope multiplied with VGS so slope is negative and the line is passing through the origin and in this scenario it will never it will never pass through this quadrant I will explain why the line will never pass through this quadrant we already know the slope is equal to minus 1 over RS RS is always positive because it is the value of resistance and it is also fixed for a particular case like in this case it is equal to 0 0.43 kilo ohm so minus 1 over RS is always negative and the intercept is equal to 0 this means the line will pass through the origin and let's say the line is passing through this quadrant and it is also passing through the origin so the line will look like this so the second condition is satisfied the line is passing through the origin so intercept is equal to 0 but the first condition is not satisfied because slope of this line is not negative the slope is not negative so it will not pass through this quadrant and uh, let's check for another case let's say the line is having the negative slope this line is having the negative slope but if you see the intercept then you will find it is not equal to 0. So first condition is satisfied the slope is negative but intercept is not equal to 0 and we needed the fourth point because VGS can be positive in case of depletion type MOSFET and if you see this quadrant you will find VGS, VGS is greater than 0 in this quadrant but the load line is not passing through this quadrant and hence there is no chance of intersection between the load line and the transfer curve and as there is no intersection in this quadrant there will be no operating point in this quadrant so we don't require the fourth point I hope the explanation is clear to you and in this way we only need three points one two and three points to plot the transfer curve like we did in case of junction field effect transistor and I will first I will first draw the y 
axis and then I will draw the x axis the y axis is the axis of drain current ID in milliamp the x axis is the axis of voltage VGS in volt this is the origin I will first locate our first point the x coordinate is equal to VGS and it is equal to minus 4 volt for the first point the y coordinate will be ID and it is equal to 0 amp so when ID is equal to 0 amp VGS is going to be minus 4 volt so this is our first point minus 4 volt is the value of pinch of voltage so VGS is equal to the pinch of voltage and I will also locate IDSS it is equal to 6 milliamp 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 milliamp this is IDSS and now we will locate the second point x coordinate is equal to 0 volt and y coordinate is equal to 6 milliamp so when VGS is equal to 0 volt ID is equal to 6 milliamp that is IDSS we have two points let's locate the third point x coordinate is equal to minus 2 volt and y coordinate is equal to 1.5 milliamp this is minus 2 volt and this is 1.5 milliamp so the point will be here this is the third point and now I will quickly connect these three points to obtain the transfer curve this is how the transfer curve will look and now we will plot the load line and to plot the load line we need two points the first point will be origin because intercept is equal to zero and to find out second point I will make ID equal to IDSS over 2 this means ID is equal to 3 milliamp and we already have the equation the equation is VGS equal to minus IDRS so VGS is equal to minus 3 milliamp multiplied with RS RS is equal to 0 0.43 kilo ohm when you solve this you will find VGS is equal to minus 1.3 volt it is actually equal to minus 1.29 volt but we can say it is nearly equal to minus 1.3 volt so we have the coordinates of second point also the x coordinate is minus 1.3 volt and the y coordinate is equal to 3 milliamp so let's locate the second point of the load line this is the first point the second point is having the x coordinate equal to minus 1.3 volt this point here is minus 1.3 volt and the y coordinate is equal to 3 milliamp this is 3 milliamp so we will have this point as the second point and now I will join the first and second points to obtain the load line load line and this curve here is the transfer transfer curve of n channel D MOSFET and you can see the intersection between load line and transfer curve is at this point so this point here this point here is the operating point of the given network and you can clearly see IDQ is equal to 2.8 milliamp IDQ is equal to 2.8 milliamp and VGSQ is equal to minus 1.2 volt VGSQ is equal to minus 1.2 volt so this is the answer of the A part which we have obtained following the graphical approach now we will move to the B part of the problem in which we have to find out output voltage VDS and potential at drain VD this part is homework for you you have to find out VDS and VD and once you have your answer post it in comment section I will end this lecture here see you in the next one